Hey everybody, it is Colin Nitro for Nitro Maniac TV's Wrestling Unlimited coming at you with the WrestleMania Night 2 recap, the Nitro's take on WrestleMania Night 2. It took place on April 3rd, 2022 from the AT&T Stadium in Dallas. And if you see me looking off camera over here, I got my notes over here, so I'm kind of doing the chair swivel tonight. <laughs> I'm going to be solo for this one uh, just because, hey... It's a WrestleMania on a Sunday night. They didn't go Friday, Saturday with this. They went Saturday, Sunday, and it's awfully hard to get a co-collaborator for this on a Sunday night late. So uh, you're stuck with me. So for the first time in the history of multi-night wrestling shows, I think we had a different show intro. It's always a trope of Wrestle Kingdom with WrestleMania now going to two nights that they'd use the same intro for two straight nights. And they finally, finally this year, caught on and put on a separate intro so already the night is off to a good start and the night opens with the game triple h is here he has his boots so i think this is his retirement deal which it is he places them with a microphone in center ring and he says i just wanted to come out here and show you my love and welcome you the best way i know how welcome to wrestlemania kind of nxt takeover style and then right after that, we get another look at Gable Steveson, who will be sitting ringside uh, for the upcoming match. They're really going to push him to the moon once, you know, he's good enough for Raw or SmackDown, isn't he? Probably Raw after uh, this deal tonight. But um, opening contest, RK Bro, the Street Profits, and Alpha Academy in a triple threat uh, tag team match for the Raw tag team titles. The runtime for this one goes 11 minutes and 30 seconds. And, uh, man... Chad freaking Gable just stole the show. The man is amazing. I love it. Uh, big pop for the Orton hot tag during this match. Uh, Doomsday blockbuster on Gable by the Profits only nets a two count. And then the finish of this thing were dual top rope RKO's by Riddle and Orton net a one two three count in the ring. And then post match, uh, Gable Stevenson they bring him into the ring to celebrate. And then Chad Gable knocks the beer out of Gable's hand. And Gable froze well, Chad Gable. So we'll have Gable versus Gable here, which is kind of cool <laughs> going forward. Um, yeah, solid opener. Not a whole lot different than what you'd see on a Monday night. But it was a very entertaining version of what you'd see on a Monday night. So there we go. Um, you know, just what the doctor ordered. And it got everybody all amped up and ready to go. And apparently uh, the crowd was, well, the crowd was hot throughout. I'd, there might have been spots in the night where the crowd kind of died down and that, and, and that stuff, but it didn't suffer from the usual mania flaps, which is, you know, three, three and a half hours in, the crowd kind of dies and, and back up. Our next contest was Almost versus Bobby Lashley, and Bobby Lashley defeats Almost by pinfall in 6 minutes and 35 seconds, which was really surprising. I know myself and Morehouse had Almost figured out because we thought Lashley was hurt. So maybe not hurt as much as we thought he was. Maybe there's a little bit of a change there. I'm, I don't know. But uh, there are lots of power spots with almost early on. Uh, almost is just dominating in this thing. Lashley finally lands a suplex on almost. Then a first and a second spear for the 1-2-3. And Lashley nets the free count. Again, runtime, like I said, was 6 minutes and 35 seconds. And it doesn't look like Lashley's that hurt. Um, you know, if, if he is, this is a... A really interesting way to send him off into uh, a period of time where he's not going to be, I guess, on WWE TV or so on and so forth. But um, he, just, he didn't look like he's going to be jumping back on Raw sooner rather than later. So uh, I guess whatever the injury was, um, either kayfabe or not as severe as one might think it was. Then came the Anything Goes match, and this thing put the Anything Goes into Anything Goes. It was Jack Ass's Johnny Knoxville taking on Sami Zayn, the second celeb match at this WrestleMania. Uh, and it almost was a quick squash for Sami Zayn, which a lot of people had on their list. So they teased it a little bit with a Haluva kick right off the bat by Zayn on Johnny Knoxville. A lot of people said Haluva kick and then one, two, three, and then Sami Zayn might get his come up and after the match. Uh, that didn't happen that way. In fact, they ran that thing uh, 14 minutes and 25 seconds, which makes it, uh, believe it or not, the second longest match on the card tonight, <laughs> according to the Wikipedia timer. But uh, this had at times, um, you know, flashbacks to the old WWF hardcore era with weapons and so on and so forth. But it also had a lot of, you know, jokes and chicanery 
it kind of felt like you were watching like a GCW comedy match or a uh, uh, you know a, a, an independent wrestling comedy match with the amount of gag comedy going on in this thing. Uh, it definitely is not one for the cornet um, based you know true pro wrestling fans out there or um, you know as, as, as somebody has coined them online the cornet lovers out there uh, you know that that like the old school art of professional wrestling versus the new school sports entertainment um, but if you like the new school sports entertainment then this thing had everything you wanted and then some um, I popped for the giant hand myself because watching the movie the giant hand was my favorite part of the latest movie uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> cool to see that uh, make a appearance for sure and uh, man it, w it was great it was great this stuff um, the body slam that we man gave well yeah we man recreated the Wrestlemania free body slam that Hulk Hogan gave Andre the Giant with Sami Zayn and it was incredible that it was such a great spot dead center in the ring just a great homage to that that was that was great <laughs> um, the finish of this thing uh, Johnny Knoxville intercepts Sami Zayn and sends him through a table that had mouse traps on it on ringside and then they bring out the entire jackass crew brings out a giant mouse trap and set it up in the ring and the giant mouse trap didn't work right but eventually it does and it traps Sami Zayn and it allows Johnny Knoxville to get the one two free count um, definitely a match that I have not laughed harder at than this one in a while and it provided a lot of comic relief so I was really happy with this one um, you know <laughs> just the ultimate in general fuckery and there we go that's the one time I'm going to cuss during this uh, review for you guys tonight up next on the show was the fatal four-way match for the WWE women's tag team titles we had Naomi and Sasha Banks Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Shayna Baszler, and Natalya, and Queen Zelina versus Carmella. Uh, the runtime on this one was 10 minutes and 50 seconds, and we have new champions in Sasha Banks and Naomi. So that's a great selection for a women's tag team uh, division, I think, because Sasha and Naomi, it looks like they may be building towards something as well, where they got the classic tag team partners, and then inevitably there may be a split later on. Maybe this will be something that we see at SummerSlam later on for a bigger prize. Maybe the SmackDown title uh, is on the line in that, at that point. But at this point in the game, hey, it's a great tag team to throw their uh, belts on. And I thought that the match itself had a lot of great spots to it. It didn't feel like as much of a cluster as some of these matches were. Much like the tag team turmoil match was last year, um, you know, for women's tag team titles. This one here kind of had a little bit of flow to it which was crazy you know for a multi-woman match uh some great spots uh Rhea and uh Liv Morgan look great so I think that they might be one of the teams challenging for this title too and of course uh Queen Selena and Carmella as a champs will probably get the first crack at it if not on uh Smackdown on Friday upcoming uh, I would think probably coming up at Backlash in May but there we go and by the way, I love the double team finish that Naomi and Sasha have to finish off their opponents now at this point. It's kind of like a tandem uh, uh, lung blower face breaker combo uh, for the one, two, three. And they smoked that on Carmella. And man, that was just mm, chef's kiss. I loved it. Then came a match that I had pegged as one of my favorite matches on the card. And it ended up being so. And probably one of my favorite matches. Uh, across the past two nights, Edge versus AJ Styles. A little bit of weirdness to begin with where AJ walked out and he was busted open and even announced, the announce team was like, wow, he's ripped open, what the hell's going on? Apparently AJ hit one of the elements of the stage coming up through the gorilla position and out to the stage on his ring entrance. So um, what initially was reported as a pyro burn is erroneous. Don't believe that, that, that is completely untrue. It is a cut that he sustained coming up through the steps, through Gorilla, and out to the stage. Maybe they should bubble wrap those things. I don't know. Just me. That's just a safety thing. I'm, I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, the match itself. Uh, great kind of old school meshing of the two styles. Um, I can only think back watching this match, what this match would have looked like 15 years ago with both guys kind of in their, you know, in, in the peak of their popularity for both federations that they were in, in TNA and WWE, what it would have looked like. Um, man, yeah, this thing here was, um, you know, such a clash of styles, front and back. The finish, Damian Priest runs down and interferes, allowing Edge to get the 1-2-3. 
Uh, he is with Edge now, and Edge spears AJ into, uh, you know, as as AJ was going for the phenomenal forearm. AJ is distracted by Damian Spear, uh, Damian Priest coming down because it's like, oh my god, what the hell is he going uh, doing down here? Jumps up on the ropes, tries to go for a phenomenal forearm, and Edge catches him with the spear, which was cool. Great spot. One, two, three count. That's it. And Edge and Damian Priest begin, and this is a rumored stable, apparently. Uh, rumor has it that they're even looking at Finn Balor for the stable, too. So, Backlash will be on Sunday, May 8th this year. And the attendance, 77453 for night two. And then it was 77899 uh, for night one. So 77899 on night one. So let's put that into the online calculator here. And you put 77492 in. And you add them up. So a two-night attendance that they're going to claim at 155,391. Um, we'll have to wait and see if that's the legit number or not. I would have, I would hazard to guess that probably it would be somewhere in the 50 to 60,000 range. Uh, it looked like that, you know, there was, it wasn't as full as, um, you know, was made out to be for Mania in 2016. And I think they changed some seating around for this now because of, uh, you know, don't forget still pandemic times and stuff like that. But, um, you know, to claim 155,391, eh, it looks good on the, uh, you know, on the financials and that stuff for the quarter and so on and so forth. So we'll wait and see what the real numbers are that roll out from that. But that's the numbers we got right now. And of course, don't forget, this is, you, you can't tell who had two night packages, one night tickets, stuff like that off of that either. So, it, it you know, it's, it's not a unique number. Let's just put it that way. One of the disappointments of the night was this next match. Sheamus Ridge Holland with Butch taking on New Day. Uh, this was the de facto number one contendership for the SmackDown tag titles, as we learned, because of Shinsuke and Boog's uh, misfortunes on night one. Uh, the match starts hot, and New Day is in Big E tribute gear. Uh, get well soon, big man. Yes, get well soon, Big E, definitely, for sure. Quick squash, though, as the numbers game is too much for the New Day, and Ridge Holland hits the Northern Grit finish for the one 2 free count. Unfortunately, the runtime here was one minute and 40 seconds so um yeah i'm glad they got their match but man just rotten luck to those guys uh being involved in wrestlemania and then having their their match move from saturday to sunday's card and then uh you know having it almost cut down to next to nothing but uh, i think they tried better than nothing to you know get them on so that is just the way it, it shaped out but the, it was a major disappointment on my part uh, I would have loved to see them, you know, do a five-minute thing, at least. The Hall of Fame class gets another mention, and The Undertaker is imminent. He comes out and salutes the crowd again one more time. And then comes another match I was looking forward to tonight. Pat McAfee versus Austin Fury. Mr. McMahon is afoot. He comes out, introduces Austin Fury. And Pat McAfee is using Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes as his entrance music. I love it. The, the runtime for this match was nine minutes and 40 seconds. And the finish for this thing was uh, Fury goes for the aid town down, but McAfee counters it into a small package for the one-two free count. Uh, McAfee looked awesome here. Uh, again, he looked very similar to his NXT feud with Adam Cole. He used a lot of the same maneuvers and the same spots, uh, you know, that we've seen in those things. And don't forget, the dude's worked in war games before too, so he knows what he's doing in the ring. Um, and uh, just looked really, really good. Post-match, McAfee said something to McMahon. I didn't catch what it was at ringside, and Mr. McMahon runs in, rips off the shirt, and then what looks like the setup for a McMahon-McAfee match is preempted by a Fury run-in, but the bell rings, so now we've got a bonus match added to the card, Mr. McMahon versus Pat McAfee, and that one runs, uh, well, 3 minutes and 45 seconds, and Mr. McMahon gets the pinfall victory, uh, after kicking the football at Pat's ribs and getting a free count after Fury and McMahon basically double teamed him and uh, you know beat him down during this entire contest. Uh, while they celebrate, the glass breaks and Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out, hits a stunner to Austin Fury, which is awesome. If you haven't seen the gif of that online, go ahead and check it out. Uh, a stunner to Pat McAfee much later on as well as they were celebrating. But also a one of the worst stutters of all time on a 76-year-old Vince McMahon. 
Um, Vince, maybe now is the time to say, dude, um, no more stunners. <laughs> I mean, twenty at the Raw 25th anniversary, five years ago, you were saying no more stunners. <laughs> What was it? Like, six years ago was the Raw 25th anniversary? Yeah, I think... or No, four years ago. I'm getting my timelines mixed up. Four years ago, at the Raw 25th anniversary, you were saying, no more stunners, please, Steve. And uh, you looked kind of bad then when when you kind of bailed out of it, and I think Shane took your stunner then. This one here, um, man, I, I think uh, he should have, you know, hit L1 and then escaped out of the ring there, dude, uh, because that was a bad sell. Uh, it's one of the worst sales of all time. If you see the GIF online, yes, you can make fun of it. Um, at least you have the guts to get into the ring and do it. But, dude, um, ye. <laughs> it just didn't sell right. So, there we go. And that leaves us with the Unification Title Main Event. Winner take all. Roman Reigns, Universal Champion with Paul Heyman taking on Brock Lesnar, the WWE Champion. And this one ran 12 minutes and 15 seconds. And Roman Reigns defeats Brock Lesnar for both titles and walks out of WrestleMania with both titles but how it happened was very interesting uh, Roman comes out promo time big reaction both men do their own intros in the ring which was hilarious Brock's kicked ass Lesnar removes his gloves so he goes bare knuckle throughout this Heyman suckers Lesnar in early on and Reigns spears Lesnar for the barricade spear by Reigns only and that's two count there were two Superman punches by Roman but Brock jumps right up doesn't sell him and then Roman goes to Suplex City uh, man, <laughs> I have Regina down here <laughs> for a note. No, uh, Regina is in the same province that Brock is from, Saskatchewan. But, uh, you know, Brock goes, or sorry, Roman goes for a spear. But, uh, you know, there's an F5. He gets intercepted for an F5 by Brock. And only that's a two count off of that. And then the ref gets taken out, goes for a low blow. And then a pin right off that, only that's a two count. And then here is the finish of the match. Very interesting here. A spear into a Kimura lock by Brock, but Paul Heyman pushes the ropes ever so closer so Roman can get to it. In the space of the lock, uh, Roman separated his shoulder. Uh, there was a rumored separation of AJ's shoulder in the AJ Edge match earlier on. This would be the second separated shoulder of the night, and this was a definite separation of the shoulder. Um, you know, and I think it's legit because uh, post match when Roman was trying to hold the belts up, he looked like he was sick when he was trying to hold those, both those belts up at the same time after popping it back in, which is crazy. Uh, Roman though hits another spear again with a questionable shoulder. Are you kidding me? And that's a one, two, three count. And then post match, Roman is very gingerly putting the belts up in that victory pose at the end. And uh, man, he, you know, he. He kind of looked like one of the jackass guys after a stunt, kind of getting back to his feet like woozy or whatever, but he's just giving everybody the whoa like that. Uh, you know, uh, it's very evil Knievel getting wheeled out on the stretcher at that point, but still, you know, the crazy stuntman, right? And, for, and well, Roman is still the guy. Brock's still the guy too, but Ro Roman is the guy right now with both belts. He is the undisputed champion going forward. So out of 10, my ranking for night two, I'm going to give it a seven out of 10. So that leaves seven out of 10 on night one, seven out of 10 on night two. So the whole pay-per-view gets seven out of 10 for me. Uh, I think that this was one of the better manias of the past decade. Uh, definitely, you know, something over the last five years or so, uh, since 2019, this was the best WrestleMania that we've seen. Uh, you know, 2020 was trash, so you can garbage it and throw it away. 2021, night one was really good, but night two suffered big time. Uh, this one kind of suffered the same way. I, I rank uh, night one just above night two a little bit in quality, but this one wasn't far off of night one in my opinion. Um, if you didn't like the, uh, you know, the chicanery of the jackass guys in the uh, matchup with Sami Zayn and that stuff, that's one thing. You know, the, I know people will basically just piss on that, but you know, the event as a whole for night two, uh, I think, was fairly awesome. It was great. Uh, it had its own unique feel to it throughout, even though some of the things were repeated, you know, uh, throughout. Like, we've seen Austin both nights, which was pretty cool. Uh, Austin was still handing out stunners at 57, doing a back-to-back. -back. I think I saw somebody from the NBA tweet, 
a man, Austin's out here at 57 doing back-to-backs, and then there's NBA players at this point in the season taking nights off. Yeah. Go figure, right? So there we go. But, uh, man, it, you know, athletes are athletes. they got the athletic heart. And Austin was all in on this weekend, let me tell you. I wouldn't be surprised if he showed up on Raw tomorrow night, to tell you the truth. They're still in Dallas. I mean, really, you know, why not? But, uh, yeah, and it's going to be the rowdiest Raw of them all because it will be the Raw after Mania. And that's always a party. So you can join me on Twitter for that one, at Kellen Nitro. I might be tweeting out some fun stuff as we see it. You know, anticipating, well, Cody's going to have a live mic first time in, in six years, and we'll know what he's thinking, what direction he wants to go. Um, we'll have, you know, potentially the uh, official Raw debut of Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, maybe even the raw debut of Braun Breaker as well, officially, as a full-time roster member. And who now? Who else knows what else will pop up on this, uh, you know, Raw After Mania, which always is fun. So, anyways, later days. Happy wrestling watching. Thanks for taking this journey with me again this weekend, guys. Uh, there is an NXT stand and deliver Nitro State coming your way as well. Um, if it's not already posted already, depending on how this is all cut and put out there. But... Thanks again, folks. See ya. Later days. Happy wrestling watching from Nitromaniac TV. And uh, I'm going to go suck on a throat lozenge because that's a lot of talking. With slide number one. Here's slide one. Damn, this a big egg. <laughs> okay. I wonder if there's chocolate in that. <laughs> it's probably loaded with caramel. Maybe some nougat. Out of the way, I want to crack it open and have Easter come early. <laughs> okay, slide number two. Okay, now they put it behind glass. Now you got egg in the cube. <laughs> it's like they put the egg in the fridge. <laughs> Roman Reigns is looking at the egg like he want to make an omelet. <laughs> He's hoping it's just egg whites. <laughs> Yeah, he's the tribal chief. He ain't got time to sew through the eggs. Pick out the yolks. He just wanted the egg whites. He's all protein. Paleo diet. <laughs> and finally, the third and final slide. <laughs> okay, which one did you stole my egg? <laughs> you know how priceless that thing is? <laughs> you should see the chicken. The egg came from the peacock. It all makes sense. You didn't know that? WWE's on a peacock, and now I got this frilly looking egg. That's a peacock egg. You didn't know that? Okay. Give me back my peacock eggs. It all comes full circle. I love it.